Welcome back. One of the nation's leading civil rights groups, the NAACP, said in a letter this week that black student athletes should reconsider attending Florida's public colleges and universities. This in response to a new state law eliminating diversity, equity, and inclusion programs. Last year, Republican Governor Ron DeSantis signed a bill prohibiting the use of state funds for any DEI programs. But this has basically been used as a veneer to impose an ideological agenda. The University of Florida responded by closing the office of the chief diversity officer, eliminating 13 full-time DEI positions and 15 administrative appointments, and ending DEI-focused contracts with outside vendors. Several other public colleges and universities have done the same. Professor David Canton, who directs the African American Studies program at UF, says top quality talent might now choose to avoid Florida's universities. So there might be a long-term impact in terms of recruiting high-end talent based on the fear that, you know, this state isn't welcoming to diversity and inclusion. Governor Sanders sees DEI as toxic. People love to think that DEI is only for African Americans, which is not true. It also applies to white women, Asian Americans, LGBTQ, disability students. So, Gail, should uh, Florida be concerned about this letter from the NAACP? I think they should. Uh, we're already labeled as, as the state where racism comes to thrive, and here we go with this. Of course, um, African American and minority students, as all students, are viable uh, to the university experience. And I, I, just, I just find this incredible. And this is the way uh, to respond. Um, it's the right to free speech. Uh, and the idea that you wanna minimize uh, the heritage of people of color is just nuts. Because, you know, we, ha we understand that all cultures are different. And, and the United States is the epitome of a multicultural nation that is the greatest in the world. Why do you want to try to erase the viability of particularly African-American history, uh, impact, uh, and telling the story of why we're where we are and so forth? So here you have a governor, a governor leading the charge in trying to pretend, for example, and we know what all this was. We talked about it the last time I was on the show about um, saying that this is indoctrination, it's the truth. Tell the truth about what happened in our history. Uh, and it happened, we can't make it go away. So he's trying to erase that and pretend, for example, that slavery was an apprenticeship program, it's crazy. So I, I believe that it will, it will uh, gain traction, it's gonna cause problems, and this is because they continue to press this issue, it's not healthy. Uh, Deborah, let me put up two quotes, one from the governor. Uh, this is right after the University of Florida canceled the DEI programs, and the governor said DEI is toxic and has no place in our public universities. He said, I'm glad that Florida was the first state to eliminate DEI and hope more states follow suit. That was the governor at the beginning of the month. And let me read from Emmett Smith, who is an NFL Hall of Famer, also a graduate of the University of Florida. Uh, he was a longtime player for Dallas, and this is what he said. He said, I'm utterly disgusted by UF's decision and the precedent that it sets. We cannot continue to believe and trust that a team of leaders, all made up of the same background, will make the right decision when it comes to equality and diversity. History has already proven that this is not the case. And Deborah, let me ask you, uh, do you think that the Florida athletic programs or Florida uh, scholarship programs uh, will be hurt by what, the, uh, what no. the legislature and the governor have done. No, no, they will not suffer. I've been around athletes at every level, from youth all the way through professional and in many, many, many sports. And they don't see color, they don't see culture. They see their buddies, their team. They love one another. It's only society that tries to divide their teams and uh, it won't have any effect. They're coming to Florida, they love Florida, they love their teammates, they love their sports. It will have no effect at all. In fact, they resent the division that comes from outside that doesn't understand team sports. So, Jason, I wanna ask you, uh, is, how, how is Ben Sass, how is Ben Sass viewed in this? Uh, you know, as the University of Florida goes, so goes much of the, uh, uh, 
public uh, university system in Florida. How is Ben Sass being viewed as, as one who, who took the lead on this and, and eliminated DEI on his campus? Yeah, I think a lot of folks think this is exactly why Ben Sass was brought in to sort of be the the sort of the mm -hmm. henchman for this sort of thing, right? And and just to to recall, like in, so viewers remember how Ben Sass got that job. The Florida legislature and Governor Ron DeSantis passed a law that made it secret who was applying for uh, for university presidency jobs. So the public could no longer see who the applicants were. And it was supposed to be that you would find out when there were finalists. So the public would see the, the three or four finalists who would then be decided on. But they abused that system and made it so Ben Sass was the only finalist. And in effect, he was given the job <laughs> right. without any sort of public scrutiny. And now he's doing this. I mean, it's it's a further sign of the politicization of Florida's universities, which has been a hallmark of the DeSantis administration. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. The, 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 the other thing is FSU did it too. FSU just did it. I don't know if the rest of the panel knows, they recently secretly uh, um, uh, eliminated the DEI program. Why, why do we have to keep this stuff secret? Uh, it, it's just outrageous, and they've they've also um, completely dismantled uh, government in the sunshine. Um, they don't. Well, we're not into that right now, but I do believe that uh, the 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 black student athletes in particular will will be protesting. Douglas, and if they were protest, they were protesting against FAMU uh, on on things that they didn't agree with without hesitation. So don't think that all is goodness and light here because this is exploitation and it's pure racism. Douglas, some Florida Republicans, though, say that DEI programs are racist against white folks. Um, that's been a complaint from Republicans here I, you, in Florida. You know you know what? I, I understand that, Rob. But no one has said anything about this. No one has felt like their kids were being indoctrinated prior to Ron DeSantis using culture wars to try to gin up his base. It didn't work. America said, we don't want you as our president. We don't want to be like Florida. So guess what? The culture war thing is not working. All this foolishness that he's doing with public schools and, and eliminating DEI and all of this sort of thing and uh, eliminating black history, it's not working. People would rather focus on other things like improving education as opposed to implementing uh, stuff that actually is punitive politics. That's what it is. D against Douglas, people how, of power. how do you think it's it, clear? Just, uh, Go ahead, just Douglas. a contextual note. This is actually not the first time the NAACP has uh, come out against uh, the state's leadership. When the governor, Ron DeSantis, first signed the DEI uh, spending ban for state colleges and universities, they actually issued a travel advisory uh, right. for the state of Florida as in multiple other organizations. Now, Team DeSantis responded that that was a stunt, but this has kind of been brewing for a while. Um, the DEI si bill signing spurred a lot of it, but there was also the controversy around AP African American Studies as well. I mean, this has been a uh, long conversation in the state, and I mm -hmm. obviously, based on the events this week, it's going to continue. Uh, right. I, I had a conversation with Adora Nuezi, who is a good friend, uh, so uh, there's more to come. Uh, she's not fooling around. And the national NAACP is, is looking at this as are other um, uh, civil rights organizations. And of course, we know there are many. Deborah, I've talked to a lot of professors who teach at public mm -hmm. universities here in Florida, especially locally in the Tampa Bay area. And they say that they see a, a number of um, uh, job openings and PhD candidate openings, and they, they see a drop off in applications for both those, for both the jobs as professors and a drop off in PhD applications. So does that indicate, I mean, this is anecdotal, of course, right. too, but. Does that indicate well, we have a problem? No, I think a lot of um, those professors have become of retirement age, so there's a lot more openings than there are. And, uh, you know, the opportunities there, some universities are shrinking uh, because more young people are going into trades and professions where they can immediately make money. They need to make money with this very depressing uh, economy. So I don't think it'll have any effect on the quality because you have to remember, Florida universities are ranked some of the top in the entire United States, So, and that's all three of our majors.